What up, y'all? Appreciate you showing up, hanging out. This is my dumbass. Like and subscribe. So, I was listening to Digital Foundry. Now I know, I know, I know. You guys are like, oh, they're ponies. Why you listen to them fools? Boop, 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 boop. And you guys are probably right. Uh, they do lean away from Xbox. I'm not going to say necessarily towards Sony per se. They're more PC heads. You know, they're, they're more of the tech, tech faces. And what I want to talk about today is kind of why I still listen to them. Because outside of the console war fighter and all that stuff, they were talking about today about latency, about milliseconds. And they got deep. They talked for like a half an hour about latency. That's how, that's how you know somebody's a nerd. Latency. They're like milliseconds. Then they broke it down like, okay, this game, basically it started with... um. John Linneman was talking about, because he had uh, reviewed uh, Tekken 8, right? And he was like, yeah, da, da, da. And he was talking about how, you know, the latency. Of, uh, and he went through, like, the history of Tekken games and the latency. And, like, how this Tekken 4 was this. And Tekken 5 was 100 something. And Tekken 7 was 80. And this was 40. And I'm like, well, how are they jumping all around? And it's crazy. And I think, um, I forgot what Tekken it was. Tekken 7 was Unreal 4? I don't remember. But, um... It was interesting because they were kind of getting in the weeds about it. And I hadn't really thought about it that much, right? We just talk about the kind of the, the broad strokes. Oh, resolution, frame rate, colors. <laughs> okay, colors used to be back in the day. Back when pixels, that's what the... Anyway, how many sprites you could have on screen at the same time, remember that? <laughs> anyway, they got in the weeds about all those things. And they were, they got so in the weeds that they were like, yeah, and around 2008, when LCDs first came up, you know, the flat screens, the latency was so bad that it added so much latency to the games that we were playing that it was just, it was rough. And so I was like, I, I never thought about all the little in intricacies of, you know, latency or, you, you know, you get the... Um, not F, not F, SSR, FSR, uh, all those things that help with frame rates. Um, the, uh, the whatchamacallit for the, uh, wow, I'm forgetting all the acronyms now because there's so many of them. But they have all these, uh, these new, um, not new, but they have all these tools to mitigate the performance or the lack thereof performance in certain instances, whether it's frame rate or screen tearing or whatever. And... They, they're, they're in it deep. And I, I was listening to it. I was following them for the most part. Of course, they, they go so fast that they're like, and then it was, I was like, ah, because I know about frame timing and all that stuff. And that, that's what, if your frame timing is messed up, if it's not steady, boop, 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 then you're going to have stutters. And that's, you know, that's a problem too. But <clears throat> they, th that is why I like listening to them because they go in on the things that are, fundamentally important when it comes to video games certain video games but video games as a whole because say if you have a game and you're playing it and it doesn't feel good one of the problems could be latency if the latency is too big too great then you'd be like the controls aren't responsive and it sucks this sucks to play and that goes across all games not just this game that game this genre that genre all games are subject to latency how much is there? The, the more, the worse. The less, the better. And uh, they were talking about some guy, Nigel something. I forgot his last name. But he's basically like a, a frame rate dude now. I mean, there's, there's been plenty of uh, different people who have done it with technology, whether it's recording on 60, like back, back in the day, 60 frame camera, recording the screen and the input with the, with the controller in the shot. Then you could kind of, you know, I guess break it down frame by frame to see what the milliseconds are and stuff. You could do it that way. But now this one guy, <sighs> Nigel, I didn't quite understand what they were talking about. <laughs> I'm going to be real. But it had something to do with, comp I think it was component. It might have been composite. I think it was component though. It was component. And basically he split the component signal. And <sighs> I can't even... 
All I know is one, he, they split it so that it only read one of the signals and it showed up on a screen as, uh, as the signal. And so that was a way to, f I'm sorry, I'm, I'm totally butchering it, but how they explained it and how I understood it, I was like, oh, they found a way to do it through the cabling that's more accurate than say uh, a camera, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know what, that's pretty dope. Uh, this guy's in, uh, on the, the cutting edge of, of latency uh, metering. I don't know. I don't, I don't, latency investigations. I don't know what you call it. But, you know, you have that, right? And then you have controller latency, which every controller has. Um, just the, due to the nature of whether it's wireless or even wired. I mean, I know wired is less latency, but still the signal needs to travel through the wire, which causes the latency. So when you think about it, I mean, the goal is to get the lowest latency. And then uh, he was talking about one, I forgot what the game was called. Um, and it was, it was, there was this one game that had like seven milliseconds of latency. And I was like, what game is that? I want to see the game that that is. It's probably like some, some bit, some, I don't know, some simple game. But I was like, still, that's crazy. And then they went through a couple of other games. Oh, 24 over here and da, 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 35 over here. I was like, that's really good. That's really low. That's like psh, instantaneous. But then they was like, yeah, but then there's some games that have 250, 150. I was like, damn, that's, that's bad. You know. But it's, it's, it kind of, it kind of gives me hope if that's the right word for video games in that there are still people out there who are kind of looking at i mean i think they're the only guy they're not the only guys but they're i guess the ones that have the platform that they can kind of talk to a mass amount of people about it but about the the little intricacies and, and the nuances and the little things that really do make a difference when it comes to quality video games and keeping the quality up and understanding what makes it quality and what we need to do as a community, as gamers, as creators, as developers to keep the quality steadily moving up. Yes, the technology and the hardware will get better. So hopefully latency will get, uh, will get better or lessen. But at the same time, a lot of these technologies are graphics forward. They're, they're trying to make the graphics better and make it look better. And that will affect, it will affect latency because there's only so much you can shove through the pipeline. Now the pipeline gets wider, sure, you can put more graphics, but you gotta leave room for the other stuff. And so I just hope, um, well, I, I mean, it'll still happen because the fighting game community is always aware not the fighting game, well, the fighting game community, but also the, the devs who make these games are aware that if they make a game with crappy latency and it's a fighting game, ain't nobody gonna play it. You know, that's, you know, that's one of the things you have to do right. So, but I, I definitely like that, that aspect of, of how Digital Foundry does their stuff and they talk about stuff. Everybody's still talking about Power World and all that stuff and eh, you know, it's all good, but you know, now, how's the latency in that game? <laughs> Nobody knows. But, I mean, like, look, aside of the nerdy latency talk, and I'm, there's other nerdy things to talk about when it comes to video games that make them dope or make them fly or make them whatever. But the, 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 the talking points, the rhetoric, the, the thing that I noticed that the donkey unicorns and the ponies aren't really talking about is PlayStation games. What, what, why aren't they talking about their game? It's like, I'm like, all I see is like, yo, these ponies are crying about power, blah, 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 blah. Didn't The Last of Us Remaster 2 come out? The Last of Us 2, they came out, right? Why, why aren't they talking about it? I mean, I know they got a 90s, I think they got a 90s something. I don't know, I haven't looked at the Metacritic on it recently. But why aren't they talking about that game? I would say mainly because it's like, it's a remaster that doesn't even look like a remaster. <laughs> they are so, man. And then, boop, boop, boop. Sorry it took uh, 10 minutes to get to this, but, dude. Until Dawn, re remaster? Is that what they're doing or do they doing a remake? I don't, 
Look, I... 2024 is a write-off for Sony. They have nothing. And they're going to try to say, oh, Helldivers 2 and Final Fantasy 7 and all these games that aren't their games. <laughs> and I'm like, you paid for exclusivity and you're not making the money back from that. You're just, you're spending money, basically. It's not going to sell out well because the exclusives that people want for PlayStation are the PlayStation exclusives, A, and I mean, it's like Power World. If Power World was on PlayStation, I'd be, people would be playing it, but they are not because it's not. We're not doing that again. Anyway, Until Dawn is coming out for PC. It's coming out for PlayStation 5. I'm not sure if it's a remaster or a remake. I would say it's a remaster, but uh, whatever it is, this is... I mean, you can't make this up. How would they, how would they, how are, how? <laughs> I can't even words it. How are they the market leader and they haven't put out an original game since, was it Returnal? That isn't a sequel. Return Was Returnal the last one? Like 59 years ago? Ratchet and Clank? What was the last sequel they came out with? I think it was the last of us. Wasn't the last of us? It was God of War, Ragnarok, uh, Valhalla. That doesn't count. That's a DLC, man. Man, would you? Did you ever think that Sony would be this down bad that they just they they going through their catalog and turning up the graphics on level three and calling it a remaster? And that's their plan. Their plan is that and all the third party games that they bought. <laughs> they bought exclusivity for man man why why aren't why aren't the ponies like hey playstation's going out of business they're gonna be third party because that's all they got is third party games they ain't got first party games no more i guess next year they'll have a first party game uh what what would it be again i don't even know uh i guess ghost of Tsushima 2 that's a game i think they're making um, the Horizon MMO. I don't. I don't have any. Look, I have no faith in Sony's ability to make anything multiplayer. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I think another Uncharted or another God of War. Or la wait, so Uncharted? Well, Naughty Dog. Let's see, what, what would Naughty Dog make? They're gonna make another Uncharted, or they're gonna make a sequel to Last of Us. It would make sense for them to do with Last of Us because they have the show, but I think Last of Us fatigue is setting in because Last of Us 2 didn't really do what they wanted it to do sales-wise. Uh, and Neil, Neil Druckmann is... Um, look, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it right now again. Sony's problem is that they don't make fun games. They don't make games people want to play to have fun. They make these drama-heavy, traumatic hyper violent games they're like i said they're trying to be like a award award baits oscar bait they're award bait games and then you look at last you look at any of their games drama blah 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 like spider-man is supposed to be fun loving and happy and jokey and a little bit serious here and there but you know but they they keep they keep pushing the seriousness on these games every game and then you look at that, and then you look at Power World, and Power World is just a goofy, goofy game with monsters and guns and crafting and building. And it's destroying everything that Sony has done for the past 20 years. As far as numbers-wise, it's killing them. I mean, it's killing Microsoft too, but Microsoft at least has more than a handful of games that are multi-plat, I mean, I'm sorry, not multiplayer. <clears throat> well, they some of them are multiplayer, but they're games of service, and they're still going, and millions of players are playing them consistently. I think they they coined them as billion dollar franchises, I believe, and there were like 13 of them or something. That's a lot. And you look at Sony, it's like how many that you got? How many? I mean, I guess Gran Turismo would be one. But anyway, I know I've been retreading this. And I know so somebody in the comics said I was all, uh, I was all over the place 
that's the nature of how <laughs> how I do these. Uh, it's it's just like a stream of consciousness. I don't I don't really write a script or anything like that. It's unscripted. Like I'm not gonna brag about that because that's not some, something to brag about. I should have a teleprompter and a suit. I don't think I would wear a tie. I can wear a tie. I don't anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, the PlayStation they they're uh, they're super dry, and they're th the way that they make games. It's, it's so weird because they have they literally have AstroBot, and they're not doing nothing with Astro. They literally have something that mad people would play, and they're not doing anything with it. Dude, it's the leadership. I, it's nothing I can say. It's the leadership. They're they're blowing it, and I don't think that anything's gonna change that much. At least not this year. I mean, we have to look at we have to look at them very closely and see the trends and see what they're doing, see what they're putting out, see what their output is a, and see what kind of games they're making. If they don't make games like you look at Nintendo's stable, it's all family friendly for the most part. For the majority of the games, all family friendly, and mad people are playing it because the gamers that grew up have kids now. The get, some of them have grandkids, and boom, that's that's what's up. So they got th they have almost they have three two or three generations of gamers from the original gamers to the, the grandkids, and they're still they have the nostalgia from the older the originals. They have some nostalgia from the middle kid, and then they have new kids for the new stuff that they're making. They know what they're doing. You know, toys never go out of style because there's always new kids to play with toys. That's what Nintendo is. Nintendo is a toy company. And they are doing it right. Sony is trying to be awards, 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 prestige. We're the top of the food chains, blah, blah, blah. But nobody wants what you're serving. So I don't see, like I said, the one... I mean, Ratchet and Clank, that was okay, but it didn't perform either. You know, I, I mean, I guess what I'm what I'm thinking is that their their approach, like how they're presenting these games that are kid games, they're they're not they're too adult, they're too dark. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, look at Power World, colorful, bright. Even the, even though the pals have weapons. They have lo rocket launchers and machine and all kind of stuff blowing each other up. You punching pals in the face like pop, pop, pop. You're punching chickens. And they're like tweet, 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 tweet. And you suck them in the ball. And you go, work on my camp. Go build me some houses. But it's cute. You look at Ratchet and Clank. It looks good because graphics. Is it cute? I don't know. It, was the movie even successful? I mean, I remember they came out with a movie. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That makes sense. And then it was, it, psh, nobody talked about it. I guess it was bad. I don't know. And that's that's kind of funny because Sony literally has it's Sony animation. That's who I would believe that's who did it. They have all the tools to make the thing, but it seems like with their IP, they're just not they're not doing it. You look at you look at Ratchet and Clank the movie versus. Super Mario Brothers, the movie, the new one, that uh, Illumination Man, Illumination. And I, I watched that one. I was like, all right, it's, uh, it's not horrible, but it's not the best movie I've ever seen. But I must probably uh, gather or bet or say that it was better than Ratchet and Clank. Anyway, I'm sorry, tangent. I'm just saying the moral of the story is Sony's approach to gaming is too dark and yes, there is a place for that. But when all of your games are all of that, then you're going to have a very small niche audience that will not buy hundreds of millions of copies of The Last of Us 2 because nobody want to play that depressing ass game. I mean, some people do, but most people don't. Like I said before, video games is escapism. If you're having a hard, if you are like, I'm against murder and violence, you're not going to play The Last of Us, are you? If you're like, yo, I, I'm a detect, I'm a homicide detective by day. When I come home, I just want to play with colorful animals and just goof around and nobody dies. Just knock them out and make them build stuff. That's what I want because my day job sucks and this is better. 
And yeah, they don't want to go from looking at the real death and destruction and then go home and play some simulated death and destruction. Who? Most people don't want that now. There are some sadistic people out there who like violence, who like it rough, if you will. Uh, sure. That's niche. A little, little. There's not a lot of people like that. So I don't, I don't understand the mentality of Sony. Like you look at all their first party games, right? And what, what are they? You know, I would say God of War is you get a pass with God of War because it is fantasy, basically. I mean, I know some people get get upset because this literally it's literally religion or mythology slash religion. Norse myth, it's Norse Norse mythology and Greek mythology. I guess I got to hit all the mythologies, right? Uh, is it called Egyptian mythology? I don't think so. Are they gonna go to Egypt? They should. They should have Ra and uh, Osiris and. Uh, I, that's the only two I know. Wow. Osiris had a brother, right? I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry for the tangents. I'm all over the place. That's just the nature of my brain at this point in time. But um, I appreciate y'all hanging out. Y'all like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about Digital Foundry's nerddom about the latency talk. I mean, honestly, you don't have to watch that. I just, I just thought it was funny how they went super deep into it. And I was like, okay, this is why I kind of still F with them because it's like, they may be fanboys, but when they talk about that nerd stuff, it's all nerd stuff and it's all, it's all for true. And it's, they can't really, they can't really console war about that stuff, about the tech. So that's why I keep my ear to the ground with them because they're one of the few people who uh, actually kind of do it, do it and give us the info. But anyway, also, what do you think about um, the whole, the darkness that Sony makes as far as games and, and why, do you think that's why they're not selling as many copies as they as they should in comparison to a game like Power World that's all colorful and goofy and it's, it's, it, it early access and it's, it's destroying like regular games on everywhere, right? So, you know, is that something that, um, that is, maybe that's, that's one of the reasons why Sony is not as successful as they hope to be is because they're not making the right type of games for a broader audience. Anyway, preach, and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Tilt the weight.